In order to help students that may not have finished some of the assignments, I've decided to do some more video tutorials. Specifically, I wanted to show you how you can use a browser to run Java code rather than just NetBeans. Um, there are a lot of different ways to write Java code and run Java code. So if you go to a browser and type in repl.it, um, as you can see right here, it'll give you a suggestion, repl.it for Java, Python, there's lots of different languages that this website supports. Um, but we'll do Java, if you just click on that result there, you should have an editor as well as an output pane. So we have a place where we can write the code and a place where it runs. Uh, so for this particular assignment, we're creating a trivia game. Um, and it just has to have 10 questions or more and keep track of how many the, the user gets correct and then tell them their score at the end. Um, and these questions can be anything you want. Um, you can make trivia something that you're interested in. Okay, so let's start by, well, I guess you could test this out. Um, if you just click run, it will run the code here. And if you just give it a second, it should show the text, hello world. And it might take a little while just to compile it real quickly. There it goes. So it's not as slick as NetBeans, and then some of the editing features in NetBeans, of course, that are really fancy, this doesn't have either. Um, but it's better than nothing. So if you can't get NetBeans installed, this might be a good alternative. So let's start by removing some code here. Or I guess you could just change what the text was. Let's just say, welcome to trivia. So we just keep it simple. We could ask a question like, what is the capital of France? And then we could give some options. We could say, we could press A. Oops. We could press A for London. We could press B for Rome. C for Paris. And then we need to have a way to save their response. So first we're going to need to create a scanner. And we can do that up here. Let's just do that before everything. Because we only need it to happen once. So we'll say scanner. And we'll just call it reader equals new scanner. And then we'll use the parameter system.in. Because we're using this to get input. Okay, so we can say, let's create a new string, we'll call it response, and then set it to be reader.nextLine. And then we can say if response.equals, and the answer is C, and we can say that was correct. So we print out the statement to them. Correct. All right. And then we can make an else statement. We can say otherwise, print out the statement. Nope. We'll try. Or whatever you want to write. OK. Let's test this part out before we go any further. So we can click Run. And it'll take a little while to run it. And it looks like we have a problem. The problem is the scanner class needs to be imported. I forgot to do that. So if you just add another line up here, say import java.util.scanner. And I believe it's lowercase java. Now we try it. And there it goes. So now it's working. It says, welcome to trivia. What is the capital of France? And if I put B for Rome, it says, nope, good try. <clears throat> so let's rerun it and see if it works if I type in the correct response. So I'm going to try C for Paris. Paris is the capital of France. And it says, correct. So it seems to be working. Uh, now I need to do a 
few more things. Well, number one, I need to make a lot more questions than just this one, of course. Um, and then I also need to keep track of whether they get it right or wrong. So I need to do that with a variable that counts the number of correct answers. So let's go up to the top here, close to the top, and say int num correct. And that starts out at zero. At this point in the code, at this point in the program, they haven't answered any yet, so it starts at zero. Um, but in the case where they answer the correct response, we can say num correct will increase by one. So we can say plus equals one, which is a shortcut for num correct now equals whatever it used to equal, but plus one. So if it was zero before, now it's a one. If it was one before, now it's a two. <clears throat> and then we'll just do that every single time. So we have to have another question. In fact, you could just copy this. And give yourself some space down here. And paste that. And then we can change a few things. Um, first thing we should do is get rid of the word string here because that variable already exists. We created it on line 16. And we can reuse it from then on out. So let's just remove the word string. And from here on, we can just say response equals for each new question, for each new answer they give us. Now let's change the question. Let's say, which country's flag does not have a star on it? And then we could say Vietnam. We could say Somalia. We could say Russia, except that C was the correct answer last time. So let's reorder this. Let's say Russia is B and then Somalia is C, because the correct answer is Russia. Vietnam and Somalia both have a star on their flag. OK, <clears throat> so in this case, the, the correct answer is now B. So let's say if response dot equals B at this point, then they get it says correct, and they get one added to the number correct variable. And as you can see, we can just copy and paste that same thing, or this part right here, actually. We can do that as many times as we need to. And then at the very end, we want to tell them their score. So let's create another variable called score. And this one needs to be a double just so that we have more precision. So let's say double score equals, and then we'll set it to be whatever their number correct was divided by the number of total questions, the total number of questions that were. So I guess we'll need another variable first. Let's say uh, int total questions equals, in this case, I only had two, but once you're finished, you'll have 10. So you'll need to change that to be 10 as soon as you're done. Um, so it says total questions equals 2. The score will be num correct divided by total questions. But we also need this to be turned into a percent. So let's multiply this first factor by 100.0. Make sure it turns into a double. There we go. OK, and then we can just print the score say who scored and then we can say score and then have another one for percent sign. All right. And now we click run. Let's test it out. And I'm going to try to get 50% just so we can see that it works. So I'll get the first one right. Let's say Paris. And then the next one, let's say Vietnam, which is incorrect. And it says, no good try. So you scored 50%. Looks like it's working. Let's try one more run through, and I'll try to get them both correct this time. So we'll say C for Paris, equals B for Russia. And it says I got 100%. Perfect. So like I said, you just have to do uh, more questions than this. Right now it's only only two questions. So if you'll copy this and paste that as many times as you need to, you'll have to say Control V. So there's a key on the keyboard, Control and then V. That's to paste. And 
a little paste it in there and you can just change the question, the answers, the correct answer if necessary and change this to be a three now because you have three questions, right? So just for every question you add, make sure you have that factored into the result. Okay.